In this video, we're going to look at human IK. So human IK can be activated by clicking this icon. And then you see it here. Um, and these are tabs. You can see your channel box, content browser, human IK. You can also go under Windows, Animation Editors, and Human IK. That'll bring it up. So Human IK, it is the vehicle in which you can uh, retarget animation from one source to another that uh, maybe has different proportions, different hierarchies, different uh, joint names, uh, fewer, more joints. So it's quite magical. Now, what you could do is you, you could copy keys from, say, skeleton A's leg to skeleton B's leg, but uh, if the proportions were different in any way, then the motion would just it wouldn't look right. It looks silly. So the retargeting uh, allows us to do the magic there. In order to retarget, you have to uh, create a character definition. Um, I'm going to open a scene. And when, when we export our characters, they wind up coming out with the name of the actor that we've set up. Now, when you're transferring data back and forth, you have to have consistent names. Or you would need to make uh, different shells and things. Or you'd have to make different buttons for different skeletons. So uh, in order to make this just more simple, what I'm going to do is, so if I click on Shift and click, that's going to open the hierarchy. So if I uh, select the hierarchy there, use that button, select the hierarchy. Then I'm going to go into Comet Rename. And I'm going to search for Danny underscore. And I'm going to replace it with Nana. Okay, so uh, now I've just got the skeleton that just says, just the generic names that we give it. Um, now I'm gonna create a character definition, but before I do that, um, motion capture, the, the way to transfer back and forth is to put it in a T-pose. That's with the arms outstretched, uh, palms down. And so in order to establish T-Pose, I'm going to go here to the channel box. I'm going to select the hips. And the channel box, this shows us the... Now, this has animation on it. Um, it doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do is you always want your animation to start, uh, and start from the origin. So for the hips joint, I'm going to put it at uh, 0 and X, and I'm going to put it at 0 in Z. Now it looks like the character is kind of floating above the ground, so I'm going to take the translate Y, and I can select here, middle mouse button, drag up or down, or I can just type, or I can just left click in the field, go uh, move it around. So I'm just going to keep it at 80. I, I think that's probably good. Okay, so I've positioned the hips where they need to go. Since this is a single hierarchy, this is really the only joint that I need positional information for. Well, I do for the, the joint branches as well. But for the children in the hierarchy, uh, what I need um, is to zero out the rotations. So uh, if I click on that bone, I've got these rotations that are at a certain value. And then translate X, what that means is that's the distance from this joint from that one down the X axis. Okay, so back to the hips. Select the hierarchy. 
I'm going to click with the left mouse button and I'm, and I'm going to drag. And I'm going to type zero and hit enter. And so what that does is it zeroes out all the rotations on all the other bones. That gives me a perfect uh, T-pose. And again, you need the T-pose. Uh, you need to put your character in a T-pose in order to make a character definition. So now that I've done that, so I'm going to want to go back to this T-pose. So I'm going to select this. Again, select the hierarchy. Now is when I can use the pose to shelf tool. So if I click on that, um, it'll put this pose up on my shelf. And since this is uh, data from our EAE Capture Studio, I'm going to call it E, and then I'll put T P O S for E T pose. Okay. So that's great. So then I, you know, I could scrub through an animation, and guess what? I could get to that T pose at any time. So now let's go to Human IK. And we are going to create a new character definition. And what we simply have to do is map these joints to these joints. By doing that with a rig, uh, a custom rig, different skeletons, that's how you can transfer motion. So this is called character one, so I'm going to rename it. And I'm going to call it uh, EAE. OK, and now what I'm going to do is just start assigning um, the uh, joints. So double click here on the hips. And then I'm going to select that. Then I'm going to double click on the spine. I'm going to select this first spine joint. You notice I'm clicking right on the bone. Uh, there's a reason for that, uh, and I'll show you that in the next skeleton, one of the next skeletons that I do. Okay, so I've got more than one spine joint, so I can open this up, double click. This is going to be the next spine joint. Um, I'm going to want to uh, select the neck. And here I'm going to select the head. It's going to be just this very end joint. Come into the clavicle. Select that. Now I've got mirror on. And if things are mirrored, then it's going to automatically mirror both sides. Select the arm. Lower arm. And... leg, lower arm, left foot, and I need to expand out to get to the left toe base. And so what happens, it's like you're looking at the character like that. Okay. So double click the left toe base, and that's going to be this joint. And I can come back. Okay, so if everything's green and a green check mark, I'm golden, good to go. Uh, you might find that uh, if you have to line up a character, it might turn yellow and give you an exclamation point, and that's like a caution. But as long as it's uh, if it's just a caution, you should be okay. But if it says, if it comes up where this is all lit up red, that means that it's not going to work. And in order to get it to work, you really do need to have the arms outstretched in a T pose and the legs pretty much uh, down like that. This uh, joint here is generally for a joint. If we were, say, going to take it into a game engine or just use it for a reference, we don't have that here, so we don't need. 
Okay, so I've created my definition. I'm going to unlock it. Now, I don't want to have to redo this again. So what I can do is save the definition. Um, well, so let's select this again. Go back to the T pose. Now we're all good. <laughs> I'm not going to lock it this time. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to save the definition. Okay. Now this saves it out as an XML file. And so I'm going to name it EAE template. Example bone is the hips. Uh, now if I did have like a Danny, like my, my joints or different actors, I could put their prefix in here and it would work, but it would just work specific to different names. If we take off the actor's names, all of our joints are going to be the same name. So I'm just going to have this, uh, just this general template. And I'm going to look at the path and it's not exactly where I want to put it. So let me put it under definitions here. So you just select the folder. I've already already named it. Click OK. I already have the same uh, similar template. Override it, yeah. OK, so that's uh, saving a character definition. Now also, um, I'm going to save the skeleton out with this and free of animation. It's got animation on it. Um, and I don't want that. So I'm going to come up here to the channel box, select the hierarchy, click drag all the way down here. So for translation, rotation, right click, and I'm going to break the connections. So that deleted all the keyframes. So I just have you know, just this skeleton. And it's got the character definition already on it. Okay. So I, I think I can lock it. Taking the animation off. Oh. <laughs> I was going to load it. It's just to save it. Okay, good to go. I'll see you in the next video.